The Gundam Build Fighters franchise is built upon the foundation of flashy style, furious fight scenes, and filled to the brim with fantastic fan service. And it all continues with the brand new original special, Gundam Build Fighters Jim's Counter Attack. Guys, I fucking love Gundam Build Fighters, and you know what? I am always down for a brand new season, a brand new OVA, a brand new special, whatever it is, if it's Gundam Build Fighters related, you bet your ass that I'm going to be there front and center, and we just got a brand new special, which actually uses the characters from the first season of Gundam Build Fighters, which means, of course, you're going to get to see the return of classic characters like Master Builder Sei Iori, the Italian dandy Riccardo Fellini, the love-struck Mal, the super boy genius Nils Nilsson, not to be outdone, of course, the return of the super over-the-top, hair-slicking-back badass of Gunpla, Majin Kawaguchi, and even a few other favorite characters are going to show up, maybe even a certain red-haired boy from a mysterious world. This was a great special right here. It was dumb and awesome and explosive in the best ways possible. That is what is so awesome about Gundam Build Fighters. No matter how absurd its premise is, no matter how ridiculous and out of hand it starts to get, it actually takes its entire premise seriously. And that is the best thing about this episode right here. It totally lives up to everything that you could have loved about the first season of Gundam Build Fighters. I've said it so many times, but Gundam Build Fighters is a series that is way too good for its own right. This is a series that should have failed so many times. It's basically a giant commercial for new Gundam models. And yet, it carries itself in a really high standard. That is why this series is worth watching. It takes itself seriously, it has lots of fun, it has tons of enduring characters, and if you're even a casual fan of the Gundam franchise, you're gonna see some of your favorites here. You're gonna see your favorite Gundams and mobile suits, and even some of them are going to be completely upgraded. Enough talk, enough hyping up this episode. Join me as I review the brand new Gundam special, Gundam Build Fighters Jim's Counter Attack. So, first and foremost, this is such a simple story. It's essentially just a vehicle for a lot of action and tons of fan service. And you know what? That works for me. I'm okay with that. I'm willing to accept the absolute ridiculousness that this is an episode which involves, this is hard to say without laughing, the Gunpla Mafia. <laughs> I shit you not, the villains in this episode are known as the Gunpla Mafia. They even wear like long black trench coats and wear fedoras, and they control everything in the Gunpla Underworld, which I guess always involves model kits and battling with toys. It is hilarious how serious these guys take themselves. And they come up with this crazy plan where they're going to trap Sei Iori and all of his friends in Yajima Stadium so that they can broadcast this all to the world, them being completely defeated, and basically let everyone know that we are the top dogs in the Gunpla world. We control everything underground and above ground. Bring it on, bitches. It is hilarious and it's just an excuse to see these characters come back and use some brand new gunpla and go into battle with them there is this other overarching story where you have say iori's father takeshi who is still a gunpla referee who's basically like a gunpla fbi agent who's going around the world and this is probably to me the most intriguing scene of the episode and is kind of a preview of what we could see for the future of gundam build fighters where takeshi iori is actually looking for the gunpla mafia and they actually do reconnaissance missions with actual gunpla and they do it without actually using like a plasty particle machine they're actually able to somehow utilize some sort of system which allows them to remotely control these gunpla we are going to see more of this in the future and we've been seeing a lot of evidence to this in all of the ovas that we've been seeing lately not to mention maybe some more stuff that we'll see in battle log i can't wait to see more of this in the possibilities frankly for more fan service 
are just endless. So we're going to have more gunpla in the future that can be controlled outside of the system. But that doesn't last long. We get right to the episode where the gunpla mafia traps Say and all of his friends inside of Yajima Stadium. They want to get rid of the Gundam Championship and they're all going to have to battle. And of course, since they're the mafia, they're not going to use the rules at all. And all of the characters go into this crazy fighting arena which has all of these different places they're transported to. Some of them being in space, some of them being this like weird giant forest filled with giant roses. Some of them simply just a colony or a massive wasteland where Goku and Vegeta like to freaking fight all the time. It's all just an excuse to see a lot of really cool backdrops. And predictably, of course, every single character gets to have a cool fight scene with an opponent and they have to conquer them. And it all leads up to Sei Iori going up against the main villain. And there is a really cool surprise about this villain at the very end of the episode for those who loved the first season. And then, of course, we get to see the return of Reiji. That's right, Reiji actually does return in this episode. He uses the Arista Crystal from Ayla, and he's able to transport himself back down to planet Earth, and that's when he joins Sei in an epic battle. They take down the villain, it's really awesome, and you know what? I was satisfied at this moment. I was like, that was really cool. It was super fan servicey. It didn't reinvent the wheel or anything, but I was really satisfied by everything that I saw. I even got to see a brand new Gundam, which was used by Sei and Reiji, because one of the key points of this story is that the Gundam Mafia has actually kidnapped the Star Build Cosmos, which was that cool-ass Gundam that we saw at the very end of the first season. And I was really excited to see more of it in action here. But I actually ended up getting my wish because the episode ends with a one-on-one -on -one battle, Sei Iori versus Reiji, and of course, it's freaking awesome. Everyone watching it has just got the biggest Gundam boner in the world. It's hilarious. And you're totally just riding that high the entire time. For people who are like really hardcore into Gundam, you must check this episode out. Even if you didn't check out the other seasons, if only to see all of the brand new Gundam models that were actually here. Every single character has like a slightly upgraded version and they all look really cool. I love Ricardo Fellini's brand new one, the Gundam Wing Fenice Liberta, which is just an even better version of the Gundam Fenice and it has these really cool beam wheels which you can actually use when it's not in its motorcycle mode. He goes up against a Boundock from freaking Zeta Gundam and then ends up getting taken out by the freaking Star Build Cosmos. You have Mao who is using, of course, the Gundam Mal, but it's now known as the Gundam Ju Mal, which has these freaking blasters all over his body. Just everywhere. When it, when it freaking fires a laser, it takes out the very top of a space colony, just exploding out into space and wrecking everything in its path. And he goes up against this one Mafia member who is this chick, who has got to be the most fan serviest girl that I've ever seen from Gundam Build Fighters, and that's saying a lot at this point. But man, her whole excuse for being there is just to see a lot of ridiculous flopping tits and they're there to distract Mao because of course he's just obsessed with chicks and he wants to look good in front of Misaki so he has to be all badass and defeat this chick who's also using a Musha Gundam. It's the SD version and the SD Gundams in this series are awesome and I don't even like SD Gundam at all. Uh, right after that, of course, you have Nils Nilsson, who got rid of his samurai-styled Gundam that we saw in the first season, and he's now using a ninja-styled Gundam, which is known as the Ninpulse Gundam. And I think that's really appropriate, considering that he's always been such, like, a Japanophile, if you will. Like, he's obsessed with the culture of Japan. Of course, he used a samurai, now he's using a ninja. And I say it's a ninja because it has, like, these giant shurikens that it can throw. And he goes up against this one guy who is basically using an army of gyms. And this is just fan service time. This is your part of the episode where you're like, I remember that one and that one and that one. That was from this series. That was from this series. He uses an army of various gyms from throughout the entire franchise. And of course, this might tie into the title of Jim's Counterattack. But of course, there's more stuff at the end and even Nils Nilsson is joined by Chena of all people who is still using the bear guy which is really awesome unfortunately she didn't really get to do too much more in the episode and then there's Meijin Kawaguchi who just cannot do any wrong he's so cool every single time and he's still continuing his tradition of creating the amazing series of Gunpla models this time he's going to be using the amazing Zagok which is pretty amazing as its name would imply he even goes up against this one dude 
who's using like a weird hodgepodge Gundam. It's like a gym body with a massive uh, Zagok frame on top, and it has these huge claws, and it looked really awesome too, and I wanted to see it in action, but Meijin Kawaguchi just completely wrecked this dude's world! And then finally, of course, there is Sei Iori, who is using the Star Burning Gundam. The name is going to seem very familiar, as it's similar to the Build Burning Gundam, which was used by Sekai Kamiki in the second season of Gundam Build Fighters. How do I know that? I got the whole series on Blu-ray! And Sei ends up battling against the leader of the Mafia, who is using Using a combination of a gym and the Psycho Gundam. It is the Psycho Gym, and it looks awesome, of course. I love all the close-up shots of its face, the ones that are super detailed. You know the ones that I'm talking about. I love when its visor flashes and you get to see all of that light. It's so classic anime in the best way possible. And this scene is very predictable, of course. It ends up being all of the characters arriving on the scene, actually taking it all down at once. And it gets even better when finally, out of nowhere, Reiji just appears, jumps into the freaking cockpit with Sei, and they're able to take it down with a star, hyper, burning build knuckle attack, which just completely destroys this thing in one shot. And it was triumphant as hell, and then we get the big battle between Sei and Reiji, and it's satisfying as all hell. It's just fantastic. They're totally having such a good time. The dynamic between these two characters is just as infectious as it was in the first season. You just totally want to hang out with these guys and play Gunpla Battle all day. And the whole time, everybody's just watching in there in complete awe, and it's great. And then we have a nice little post credit scene where we get to see what happened to everyone a year later, as well as getting to see what happened to the leader of the Gunpla Mafia. He actually ends up getting arrested, and it just so happens that this guy is the twin brother of Chairman Mashita from the first season. Effectively the villain from the first season. And he looks just like him, he has like the same voice, he just has blonde hair. And it makes sense why he would be there, just like his brother, he's an underhanded asshole. The Gunpla Mafia has been arrested, and it looks like Sei and all of his friends have been able to graduate from their school, but before he leaves, he leaves their trophy in the case, which of course has the Build Burning Gundam, which is going to be waiting for Sekai in the second season. This was great! This was the bee's knees, Gundam build fighters, Jim's counterattack. So great. It just has fun. And every once in a while, that's the type of anime that I like to watch. Something that's not super thought-provoking or overly philosophical or something that's even up its own ass sometimes. Sometimes I just want to see robots beat the fuck out of each other. And that's what I got from this special right here. It was satisfying, it was super well animated, and we got to see the return of some very fun characters who still continue to grow. I do love the fact that Sei Iori is now an incredible gunpla battler, something that was hinted at the very end of the first season. I mean, really think about it. He has an epic battle with Reiji at the end of this episode and completely holds his own the entire time. Their whole battle is satisfying as hell, and if you want to see how it actually Actually ends, all I have to say is just watch this episode. It's for free right now at Gundam Info. You can watch it with any subtitles that you would want. Check it out, guys. It's satisfying. It's fun. You get to see brand new mobile suits, some that you're going to completely fall in love with, and of course, it's an excuse to sell more Gunpla models. But there's also the potential to see more from the future and maybe even another season altogether, which we still have the battle log episodes which are going to be coming out, but I'm really hoping that a third season is going to be announced, which hopefully will be a continuation of both seasons. I want to see a convergence. I want to see the end of Season 2, with the characters from Season 1 finally migrating over. I want to see the older versions of Sei and Reiji, and maybe they can even expand on Reiji's world, which is still kind of a complete mystery, by the way. And then, of course, they can build upon the stuff that we saw in the Island Wars special, the fact that we have Gunpla, which can now move freely in the world. This could lead to some pretty big conflicts. I mean, just think about it. With Gunpla being able to move freely in the world, the entire planet could be covered in these fucking plastic models just fighting, and it could be insane. It could be like unlike anything that we've seen from the Gundam franchise. And again, that's why the series is cool. It's familiar, but it's also incredibly refreshing. What more can I say? This was great. This was the best OVA that I've seen thus far from Gundam Build Fighters, and yes, I am partial. I do think the characters from the first season 
are infinitely more likable and awesome than those from the second season. However, I love both of them to absolute death. I rewatch them all the time, and I still, like, laugh every time I realize, like, wow, Gundam Build Fighters is, like, in my top five favorite Gundam, and there's no way that that was originally what I thought it was going to be like, and now I look forward to anything from the franchise. So, there it is. That's my thoughts on this brand new Gundam special. Make sure to tell me all of your thoughts in the comments section below. What did you think of Gundam Build Fighters Jim's Counterattack? Were you happy to see the return of some favorite characters? What was your favorite new Gunpla in this episode? What do you want to see from the potential of either another OVA or a third season? And make sure to tell me what type of Gunpla you would build in the comments section below. What sort of crazy combinations would you come up? Would it be something unique? Would it be an upgraded old Gundam? Maybe just another mobile suit altogether? How would you fight with it? Tell me that and more in the comments section below. Thank you guys so much for watching this review. It was so fun to review this for you guys. I love Gundam Build Fighters so much. It's one of my favorite franchises and just talking about it gets me excited. You could probably tell from this review. Uh, so make sure to check out the channel. I do a lot of other Gundam reviews, just about every single Gundam anime series that's released, and of course all of the Gundam Build Fighters series. I've reviewed season 1 and 2, and all the OVAs, so make sure to check those out, share them with your friends, and of course if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. I'll see you guys next time, and as always, stay dandy, baby!